Hello again, and welcome back to Bread and Butter Primary Care. This is Dr. Stokes. And today we're going to talk about the follow-up visit after you've initiated uh, an SSRI treatment for either depression or anxiety. So a previous video was how to choose that initial medication. Um, usually when you start someone on medication for depression, anxiety using SSRIs, then the plan is to see them back in a month earlier if there's a lot of concern as far as um, safety and those types of things and then to see how they're doing. Oftentimes the SSRIs take a good four weeks to, to really know what's going on. And I oftentimes will tell uh, my students and other learners <clears throat> that generally you're gonna get one of three stories when someone comes back for that follow-up visit. They're either gonna say, this is amazing. I can't believe I didn't do it sooner. It worked so well. Um, I feel so much better. This isn't doing anything at all. It's like I'm not taking anything. I haven't noticed any change. Um, or it seems to be helping, but just not that much. I can tell that there's something there, but it's not really helping all that much. Those are the three general responses. Obviously, there it, in some cases, it may have made it worse, in which case they likely would have called and there would have been follow-up sooner. Um, obviously, there could be side effects and things. But generally, when you have a follow-up visit, you're going to be dealing either with it works really well, it kind of worked but not really, or this isn't doing anything. And so depending which of those happens kind of determines what you do. So if it's, this is great, I should have done this sooner, then oftentimes there's no changes needed. You know, you found a, a good medication that's, that's working. Um, you can use that time as well to help encourage therapy. Um, always remember that that's an important, essential part of the treatment of pretty much any mental health condition to address the non-brain chemistry components of, of these conditions. Um, and so it's good to do that. And then sometimes there's also a conversation about, well, now that I feel better, what do I do? Do I just take this forever? So that's a pretty common question. And oftentimes, maybe not in the first month, but in another follow-up visit, they'll say, I'm taking the medicine, I feel really good when do I come off? Do I ever come off? And the answer to that is it depends. Studies have shown that there is a decreased recurrence rate if someone is treated for nine months to a year before coming off. And that if you come off medication sooner than that, you'd have an increased rate of recurrence of depressive or anxiety symptoms. And so generally what I'll tell people is you're on the medicine, you're doing better, Will you need this forever? Maybe, maybe not. Um, it may be that you, with the therapy and, and life changes and that type of stuff, that you get to a place where you can manage your mood without any sort of medication, and that's certainly a desirable place to, to get to. Um, there are people where they continue to benefit from these medicines long term, similar to someone who's on medication for diabetes or blood pressure or any of those things. And so, but the recurrence rate is lower if you give it a good nine to 12 months before coming off. So that's the person who says, hey, this is great, nothing wrong. For the person that says, this seems to be doing something, but it just, I, it doesn't feel like it does much, generally my recommendation is to increase the dose of the same medication they're already on. And that comes mostly just from what was discussed in an earlier video as well, that these medications take a while to find out if they're gonna work anyway. And so you have a whole month trial to find out if it's gonna work. And finding a medicine that has the desired effect is what we're trying to achieve. And so if you've got something that is kind of, that's doing something, then generally it's a good idea to go ahead and try to maximize that medication and see if it's the right one. Because switching, you might find that you switch to something that doesn't work at all. And so if they come and say, hey, I, I feel different, I feel like this is helping, but it's just not doing that much, I'm, I'm, I'm still having a lot of symptoms, then increasing the dose appropriately is, is usually what I would do in, in that case. And then in that third situation where the person says, this is not doing anything, it's like I'm not taking anything, or it's made it worse, it's, it's made it so I don't have any emotion at all, I don't like how I feel, maybe it makes me too sleepy, maybe it makes me too energized, those situations then, the course of action is to switch, you know, change uh, medications. 
there's several different classes. You know, there's the SSRIs, the SNRIs, and some others. I usually will give at least a couple different SSRIs a chance before moving on to other medications. There's certainly some reasons to, to maybe choose one or the other, but generally speaking, you try one in a month, didn't help, made it worse, or something was wrong, then you switch to another. And that's a, it's an important conversation to have with the patients that they understand that, that this is possible because it can be very frustrating for them to try something and, and not have it work and then be like, oh, well, we'll just try something else. And then, oh, we'll just, and it's like, well, you keep just trying stuff. Is there anything we can, you know, do to like know ahead of time? And unfortunately, there's not a lot. Um, I'll likely do another video on some of the genetic testing that's available and how helpful that that can be um, thus far. But really, trial and error is is part of part of finding this this treatment, um, which again is another reason why co therapy and having that part ongoing is also important because they can also help work through some of the difficulties and the frustrations that come with treatment of these conditions. Um, so that's generally the follow-up visit when you are now, you started something and it's time to adjust. You're either gonna leave it alone because it's doing well, you wanna leave for at least nine to 12 months before coming off, increasing the dose if it's not working well enough, and switching to something else if it has either not worked at all um, or cause any 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 sort of uh, side effect or problem. <clears throat> um, so that's usually my follow-up visit um, when treating someone with uh, moderate depressive, uh, major depression disorder or anxiety disorder. And so I hope that's helpful and that you have a great day.